we mentioned we mentioned carbs there. Okay, so can you help me understand where this idea comes from that carbs are? I mean, some people will say just they're much better, but others will say they're essential for not even just life, but beyond that, mm. performance and the size into insulin too. Right. Well, I guess I'll ask this as a package question. Got it. You hear all the time, gym bros love this. They say, oh, yeah. you got to get the insulin spike, bro, because insulin is anabolic, which it is. Yep. Yeah. But is is an insulin spike that you're going to get from just eating a bunch of rice or whatever other carb source? I mean, is that going to produce noticeable, if any, muscle growth in just the, the normal person, assuming okay. there's no anabolics, PEDs, anything? Got it. Okay, so a clean athlete, not on the gear, just training as hard as they can and following the best diet that they possibly can because they listen to the right influences and not the wrong ones. There is absolutely no reason to believe that a hypertrophy muscle building athlete cannot successfully build muscle without getting these insulin spikes from their food for several reasons. Number one, constantly spiking your insulin is only going to blunt your response to insulin over time. So you might get a short-term benefit, so-called, in the uptake of amino acids because of the insulin, but that will become self-attenuating by the blunting of your response to insulin over time. Got it. Secondly, there are a number of amino acids which are themselves insulinogenic. The exact dietary requirement for carbohydrates for all people is not one single gram ever, even if you're an athlete, even if you're a hypertrophy athlete. Now, there are folks like Stan Efferding that will disagree with me, and he's got this diet that he's pushing that contains a whole bunch of carbs, and he says carbs are absolutely necessary to be stupidly over-muscled. And he yeah, might he's, be right. he's a big guy. He's he big might guy. be right in terms of stupidly over-muscledness. However, if that's your goal, to be stupidly over-muscled, then actually, you're not the sort of person I'm going to work with to advise because... But the gains, bro. The gains. Some degree so of muscularity, a functional degree of muscularity, great. Some degree of hypertrophy for looking your best, mm -hmm. good. Getting up on stage, proving to be the person who can put the most muscle mass on, the biggest beast up there. Sorry. It is. It mm. is. I mean, I, I made a recent vlog about my show ranting in the middle of it. Like, I can't believe I'm doing this, which I stuck it through, but it's it's odd. It's it's a weird combination of like, it's definitely passion because it's a passion project for sure. Nobody's making any money bodybuilding. Even the high level guys a lot of the time aren't. Maybe mm -hmm. they'll make some money, Yeah. but it's a weird mixture of like passion and body dysmorphia. That's a whole other discussion. Yeah. But next question. Okay. Have you heard of Mike Menser? Yeah. Okay, I see clips. Of, he's getting really popular again the past year or so. Okay. He has a clip where he talks about how he talks like this. He's like, well, muscles are 68 or something percent water. Therefore, if there are no carbohydrates consumed, the muscle will not grow or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. And I've heard other people say that too. Mm -hmm. uh, can you explain in more detail, like how much muscle is water and you know, do we need carbs to make that, I guess, see their fullest potential and that type of thing? The, the functional part of muscles are largely amino acids, protein. The amount of carbohydrate stored in a muscle is basically very little, almost none in most muscles, actually. And while glycogen, for example, is involved in the storage of water in a muscle cell, to some degree, if you're looking for that plump look of that, that you know, mm -hmm. that, that really, you know, highly fat look, then creatine tends to be associated with water retention in a muscle cell as well. It's not going to help your performance, probably actually in any useful, meaningful way is, is creatine. A lot of people think creatine is just one of the performance drug. No, no, not at all. You could um, call it like the gateway supplement in hypertrophy in general sure, gym culture. It's the, sure. it's the first one we all go on because it's like, oh, yeah. it's well studied and it, yeah, yeah, but. Yeah, it's also almost entirely ineffective in terms of actual meaningful physical performance feats. It's quite effective in causing muscle cells to retain more water and thus look bigger but they're mm. not any stronger. They're not any more, you know. And then what you'll do before you go on stage is you'll lose 30 pounds by dehydrating yourself so that you look ripped. I, lear I learned that the hard way, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so. Someone, someone's going to react to that and be like, word case said uh, creatine, isn't it? They're going to put up studies or something, but, you know. There are, there are hundreds, thousands of studies about creatine. Absolutely mm. there are. What you also need to understand about studies is that 95% of everything published in the health, fitness, and nutrition fields is not repeatable. 
In other words, if somebody picked up that methodology, another scientist, and said, right, let's repeat this and see if we get the same, 95% of the time they get nothing that could remotely have come from the same, you know, most of everything that's published in this field is fabricated, misinterpreted, nonsense, pseudoscientific garbage of the highest order. This, these, mm -hmm. these are people that are working in a field pretending to be scientists, mostly, in order to justify their existence and get a salary. I know because I've worked in that industry, among others, yeah. uh, over, over a couple of decades I've been involved in academia doing science, doing these investigations and publishing these kind of works. I've worked in exercise physiology, I've worked in human nutrition, and I've also worked in cardiovascular pathophysiology, among other things peripherally. So those are my kind of absolute areas of expertise if anyone's interested.